excited? <laughs> Are you getting excited? Oh, Does he okay. hump? He has been, like, as of this week, he's started. What? And we're like, that's one thing, actually, I was going to ask you. Like, yeah. do you tell him no? Or yeah, I tell him, him no. So usually if they start humping this young, just a way to initiate play. Gotcha. So he's like, how do we play? Yeah. And the more that he gets associated with other dogs, that will go away. He's like, oh, okay. you're not my playmate. That's not gotcha. how we play. During the week, we wake up at like 5.30 every morning. Then on the weekends, he's like, at five, he's like, it's like clockwork. On the clock, he's like, 5.30, ready to get up till bark. Got it. Usually we take him out. But there was one morning last weekend where we were like, okay, well, what if we just let him bark it out? And yeah. Just, we'll go back to sleep. And we did that and he like pooped in his crate and we're like really shoot like was he doing that for attention or did he really have to go has he ever had an ex in his crate before yes when we first got him but like after now, that he hadn't yeah after that he hadn't okay. so now we're like worried it's like do we have to wake up at 5 30 no like, how long did you go back to sleep for like a couple hours no it was like 30 minutes really <laughs> what time do you usually go to bed then 10 10 30 what i would have said is exactly what you did actually just try to push it like a half an hour mm -hmm. Or what I would do is try to just go as soon as he stops the barking, then go and let him out. So okay. that at 5.30 during the week, is he barking to um, get out? Yes, which it's hard because it's like that's when we do need to get up. Yeah. So we're like, like you said, we don't want to let him know yeah. that the barking is like, okay, yes, we'll come get you. Yeah. So like, kind of we'll keep going for like 10 15 minutes and at some point we're like okay we, we like need to get up what i usually tell people is that like at four months then you can like not be feeding into his barking so much mm -hmm. but especially because he's gone in the crate before feed into it just because he's trying to tell you he has to go to the bathroom okay, yeah. do you usually let him out there and then put him back in the crate in the morning mm -hmm. yeah like on weekends like that's what we did this morning we, we okay. let him out when he was barking at 5 30. He went to the bathroom, then he wanted to play, so I played for like an hour just to get his energy out, okay. and then he went back to bed. Okay, and then got we it. For another like what, two hours? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I would say is just in there and then back to the crate. Just straight back to the crate. Yeah, right. the hard part with this and like pushing that time is like you're up anyways because he's like barking, yeah, whatever. Exactly. So it's like why not let him out? <laughs> yeah. But you just have to lay there and like not let him out. Until he turns four months old, feed into when he does need to go out, but then he can go right back in there and just relax, like learn to relax. It's kind of like, I'll tell you when it's time to get up then. Because yeah. you have to feed into it if he does have to go to the bathroom still, because you don't want that become, to become a cycle of him having accidents in there. But about four months, we can work to prolong and push that time in the morning. When he gets up, goes to the bathroom, put him back in here. You think he'll just bark for like 15 minutes? Yeah, I, I mean, I would think. If he went to the bathroom and we put him back, I don't know. We should be like, okay, you can go potty, but it's not time to get up yet. Like we're still sleeping yeah. in. Like, cause it's totally fine to train a dog to be like, we get up when I say it's time to get up. Yeah. Otherwise you will have that problem of like, oh, here's my 5.30 alarm clock for the rest of my life. Yeah, like, <laughs> Great. Yeah, on those mornings that he is barking, try to push it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like don't feed into it immediately. If he's barking, try to give it like five, 10 minutes till he relaxes a little, even if it's just a breath between not barking and then let him go. One, because that will show him like just because you wake up and feel like you have to go, doesn't mean you just have to go instantly. Like you can hold it, you know, right. essentially like potty training. If you're having problems with him going in the crate, I would make it a little smaller even. If he's still having accidents in the crate, because it could be like a rebellious thing too, yeah. like you're not letting me out. Because that 10 to 15 minutes of just, you said that's how long it took him to like relax when you tried to let him bark it out? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just make him like relax a little bit. Just don't feed into it immediately when he starts the barking. Mm -hmm. Relax a little, you can tell him no, like when he's barking, and just make him like settle down and soothe himself. That's totally fine to do. I don't really do like strict leash training until like four months old. Mm -hmm. And typically from like three to four months, they have that time to like explore. So I guess I'll have like a couple weeks right now to explore before we start full on leash training. But it's important for them to just you know, just explore things, but then it becomes difficult if like the surroundings are consuming them and they're not walking well on a leash and all that. Mm -hmm. When you are out right now, just like let him explore for a bit and then just try to get him to check in with you every once in a while. Like call his name, he looks up at you, give him a treat, praise him. Cause that's the number one thing is when you go outside, usually a dog naturally has 0% focus <laughs> on you. So just get him to check in every once in a while. Like okay. start it right now while you're still in that honeymoon phase and he's like, oh, gladly. <laughs> yeah.
well with him it might start a little early <laughs> with your breed is the testing yeah. phase it's also when he's actually starts losing teeth between four and six months so if the biting you think is bad now it gets worse and then it's also <laughs> when the rest of the world becomes more motivating so it's when like all these dogs everything becomes more exciting and it's really hard to get his focus so establish that routine of, of obtaining his focus just out on the walk right now. Like that's just what we do is we check in constantly with you and it will become easy. Tell me about his biting. Like is it just constant like he's kind of been chewing on me or is it like he gets into like crazy psychotic states Sometimes and he's like, like yeah. okay and then it's just like running lunging barking. Yes. But it's, it's never like mean. Like right, British, right. Just thinks he's like we're playing. Totally. But yeah on like clothes on like hands on ankles feet like he just like goes for it and like he doesn't understand no yet or if he okay. does he doesn't like listen he doesn't care <laughs> Samoyed um, certainly care to yeah. <laughs> what no mean know what no means yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what happens if you tell him no he just comes right back at you yeah that we have to just like step out of the room for a second perfect <laughs> that's actually really good to do okay so Basically, he's at the age where if redirection isn't enough, which a lot of times it's not with a puppy, this, like you've redirected him yeah. to his toy enough, that it's more at this age, playful, loss of self-control, excited mouthing. Are there times where you can give him the toy and then he's fine? When he's in his like really crazy like moods, yeah. he just like will keep fighting. And I okay. Mean, he's and his yeah. Teeth are like razor sharp, yeah. He's definitely broken skin. Before. For sure. <laughs> so when he does this little like squirming and stuff, yes. don't let him down. Does he do a little growl sometimes? He does. Sometimes <laughs> he's like, yes. Yeah, super sassy. Yes. Yeah, definitely don't let him down when he does that. So that's kind of a control thing. Gotcha. That a lot of Samoyeds are prone to like control <laughs> issues. So it's kind of like a, li a little toddler, like, let me down, yes. let me down, and take it out. So you absolutely should not. You want him to know he gets let down when we say, and like when he's relaxed. Okay. And so he's fake, faking being relaxed right now, and he's gonna come like right back at me. <laughs> yeah. But whenever I have a puppy or a foster puppy, my goal is always like four months, there's no biting and nipping. Then by that age, all he does is redirect that need to chew to a toy or to his chewing object. Basically, if he comes right back to you after you redirect him to a toy, I would try the picking up thing to try to settle him down. If you set him back down and he still comes back at you, then you should separate yourself from him which you can go in a different room or put him into the crate. So have you ever done that, like no, crated him? It's all about the way that you put him into the crate. Don't make it a negative thing. Just kind of be like, okay, I've tried to redirect you. Clearly this environment is too overstimulating for you to control yourself. Let's settle down in here. Okay. And it teaches him self-control then you know they're forced to control themselves in there and helps him relax but that sometimes ends up being more effective than you just like going into a different room because mm -hmm. sometimes if he has all that buildup of like energy and sass he then takes it out on the furniture or whatever yeah. else you know so a lot of times it's just most effective to get him to like control himself and relax right there the other thing that you can do is when it's like running around kind of mouthing at you yeah. is direct his mind to like sit so turn your back on him if he barks that was so close. Sit. Ah. So he needs to learn some patience. So the reason why he's barking is because he's getting impatient. Like, just give it to me already. In the beginning, usually, it's probably yes and treat at the same time, yeah. right? Yeah. So right now, what I'm going to do is tell him, sit. Yes. Right away. Wait a couple seconds. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to try to increase the amount of seconds between the yes and giving a treat. So this just helps the dog become all over well behaved because so many dogs get used to like, oh, I'm not getting a treat, I'm gonna go right back to it. And when you tell a dog to sit or lay down, it should be to hold that for longer, you know? Sit. Yes. Good boy. Sit. And so this is gonna happen. You're gonna go forward and backward with it. So what a lot of times, this is gonna be the same concept that we're gonna use with like a stay and a wait, is if he gets it, you increase. If he doesn't, you need to reset and decrease. So so many people don't do the decrease. 
and it's like, oh, let's try for five seconds again. But it's like, well, that was too hard. So to build a solid base, you need to decrease. Sit. Yes. Okay, we're gonna teach him a weight. So a couple ways you can do this. One, you should do it coming out of the crate, for sure. You can also do it with treats. So I'm gonna tell him, sit. Yes. Good boy. Maybe I should use less motivating treats, huh? <laughs> I have a feeling that we're going to be doing the weight with the treat. We're also probably going to get some barking in between it. So when you do the weight, it's gonna be also teaching him a weight but curbing the barking sassiness, so you're working two things at once, so with dogs like this, makes it a little bit more difficult and longer for him to learn it, but it will be so good for him. And it's sitting there for five minutes, you can go and tell my release word. With the food thing, you don't have to get weight all the way down to the ground, because then you're always gonna have a shaky weight. You see like people who are like, wait, the dog's <laughs> half like going, half <laughs> going, <laughs> and then he's like already going, and the person's like, okay, <laughs> Instead of focusing on an end goal, just focus on when you have him relaxed and calm and not trying to control it and going for the treat. Then you can work on saying that, okay, closer and closer and closer to him mm -hmm. instead of the other way that most people do. Yes, wait. Okay, good boy. Even though he did a little bark, yeah. we give it to him because he's learning a new thing. But that time, he stayed sitting a lot longer. He had more self-control, even yeah. though it might not seem like it. Sit. Yes. Wait. Okay. <gasps> good boy. That's also really good for teaching him patience, this yeah. command. Always say okay if he starts to go for it and then pulls himself back because he was like, oh, correcting himself. Okay. So say the okay right then. Yeah. So many people, then the dog does that, and then they keep pushing it, and then he just oh, keeps like yeah. messing up. I'm like, tell him, like, reward him when he has enough self control. And notice, like, I always set him up to succeed. Like, even though I was like way over here, he didn't even try to go for it, he just wasn't going for it. Okay, right there, instead yeah. of trying to push it. Otherwise, he he's just gonna be confused. Yeah. yeah, sit. Yes, wait. Okay. <gasps> Good boy. Wait. Very good. What he's also doing is when I pull it back, he shifts eye contact to me, kind of like asks permission, and that's what you oh, want okay. with the weight. It's like, oh, what am I supposed to do? You yeah. want him to actually not be focusing on this and be looking at you and your finger over here. Okay. That's like, okay, I'm, it doesn't matter what's going on here because all that matters is that I'm waiting for your release. And so many times people with the weight, you'll see people do the weight and it's like, wait, as you put the treat down and the dog's focus is like this. Yeah. And what you really want before saying the word is focus up here. Okay. And then he goes and gets the treat. Good boy. So you can do this going forward to him. And it's confusing to him because he's like, my whole life, anytime a treat was coming towards me, that I, that's how I get it. Like, what? So he is actually catching on very fast, especially how excited he was the first time. He's really smart. And that's what you want. So if you establish that routine right away, it will be amazing. Cause yeah, so many people like put the food bowl down here and then they're like, okay. And mentally he's still like almost 100% on the food bowl waiting for one word to come out of your mouth. And what takes full self-control and what this command again is all about is like, it doesn't matter what's happening right here. It's when I tell you. So make sure you try to get that eye contact before saying okay. So I'm gonna see how far I can get the bowl in this setting. Now I'm gonna say wait right away. Wait. Go right back. If he gets up, sit. Now for the sake of his frustration level that he gets, I'm gonna <laughs> give him a treat right here to just let him know like, yes, this is what you did. Sit, <gasps> yes, wait. Okay. <laughs> he probably could have waited that whole time. Good boy, that was so good. He's like, are you sure? Shut